Invoke AI 5.0 was recently released. And today I want to go over some basics on how to navigate around it. We're going to look at things like image to image, in painting, out painting, everything you need to get started on the right foot. Now, if you're looking to install this the easiest way, I suggest using Stability Matrix. I've already done an installation video for it, link in the description below. But if you want to install it manually and you know what you're doing, I'll leave that link in the description below as well. This video is more for people that use WebUI Forge or Focus and they want a different platform that offers more creative freedom. So to follow along with this video, you should know some basics when it comes to text to image generation. So assuming you've installed Invoke AI, the first thing you need are models. On the very left, you'll see your various options. This is your canvas. This is where you're going to generate all your images, do in painting, out painting, those types of things. We have an area for upscaling. Right under it are workflows. So if you're familiar with Comfy UI, this is where you could do node base editing as well. And then here we have our models section. On the very left will be all your installed models. You'll see an area for refiners, VAEs, control nets. You can filter it by this button. So let's say I choose refiners. You see I have an SDXL refiner there. But in this section is where you can install your models. So if I click on starter models, you'll see there are some recommended ones. There is Flux support at the moment, but currently Flux doesn't seem like it's optimized, at least for my card. For me personally, it's really slow. It's probably something I have to do in the back end. Maybe the Python version has to be updated or whatever the case may be. Your mileage may vary currently with Flux. But anyway, what you can do is just go through this list and download any of the recommended ones. So let's say I wanted to download Dream Shaper XL V2. I can go ahead and click that and then you'll see the progress here and install it in Invoke AI local model location. The other way you can install it is scanning a folder. So you see here I already have my address in there. If I were to click on scan folder all my various models that I have installed already. If you select hugging face you could just paste the owner and model name in here and then lastly you have URL or local path. So you can paste in the models location here straight from Civit AI. Just hit install. You see it says in progress. Now just to be clear, the address here is not what you need. You need to go under the download section here, right click and copy link address. That's what you're going to paste in here and you see that's what's downloading now. So now that model's been downloaded and you see it at the top right here. Now the other way is just pasting in a local path. Now, whether you use Stability Matrix or you have a dedicated hard drive for your model, you'll just have to go to the model file, right click over it, copy as path. And then here you want to paste the path there. Click on in place install. That way it's just going to read it from that location. If this is unchecked, it's going to install another version separately with an Invoke AI. Now I mentioned this because if you're using Stability Matrix, you can just install your model model here, but just for Invoke AI, you're still going to have to link it like this. If you're using Forge, Comfy UI, you don't need to do that. Now let's talk about the actual interface. This is the generation button and you can enter your quantities here. This icon sends your images to the gallery, which we'll look at in a second. And then this icon sends it to the canvas. So currently we're in viewer mode. This is where your standard generations are going to happen. If I close the viewer, you see the checkerboard patterns here. That means we're in the canvas. Alternatively, if you open this up, you see open viewer here. We can now open that screen once again, or if we close it, we'll be on the canvas. Just be mindful that these two are different states. So if you're just doing straight up generations, your images will go to the gallery. And then when you select the canvas option, it will generate directly on the canvas. And I'm going to show you those differences in a few minutes. The hamburger menu here, you see that this is when we're actually generating images. You can cancel or clear items here. You can pause the generation, resume the generation, and open what's in queue. So if I had something running, you would see it here. Both panels on left and right are adjustable and you can even close them off. You can even just double click it and it'll close that way. And before we get into all the settings here, 
I do want to show you this side. We have our gallery and then we have layers. I'm going to show you layers after, so we'll just focus on the gallery. I really like how Invoke AI organizes the images locally. So they use something called boards. As you see here, I have different boards here, tutorial assets, fantasy characters, bikes, astronauts, portraits, and on the right here, you'll see a gear, and this will control the thumbnail size. You see how the image size changes. By default, you see auto switch to new images. So it'll just put the new image first. Auto assign board on click. So that means if I click this one, you see auto. Automatically, any new generations will go to this board. You'll also see a counter of how many images there are. You can toggle this on to see the size of the image. So you see 10 by 24 there. And if you have any archive boards, you can click that. I don't have any. And for the images, you'll see you can star any favorite. So if I select star here, and then I go back to the settings and I toggle this on, that starred image is now going to be first. There it is. And then we have our sort direction, put newest first or oldest. And then there's a search function. So let's say I'm searching for fantasy. You see, it's going to pull up my fantasy boards. Just for clarification, this isn't to search for images. It's to search for your various boards. Now to add a board, you just click on this plus button here. It says add board and the default will be my board. If you just double click the name, you could rename it to whatever it is you want. So let's say I'm doing one for landscapes and then you'll see that it automatically selects that one. The only other thing here, oh, the assets. So assets are, let's say you're using control net and you have some reference images that you're going to use. It's going to show up in this area here. Now for layers, we'll go over this when we're looking at the canvas. The first section here, we have prompt templates. If we click on the drop down here, you see that we have some pre-made templates that you can use. So let's say I wanted to do some concept fantasy art. I could just click on that and then put in wizard on a mountain. And if I toggle the view mode, you see my prompt is what's in bold and the template prompt is everything else. This is really good because what you can do is create your own templates. So if I click on this, we can manually create our own prompt templates, or we can take an existing image. Let's say I like this style and I right click over the image. You'll see here, there's an option used for prompt template. Select that. It's going to put all the details of this image into the appropriate areas, positive prompt, negative prompt, and I can name it whatever I want. Just hit save. And then your templates will be saved under my templates. You see, here's my prompt. Yeah, it's a long one because it's for flux. And you have options to copy it, even edit it if you want to make some changes to it. So it's a really cool feature to have, especially if you have specific styles that you want to save. Now this option here, flatten selected template into current prompt. So if I were to click on this here, you see that it's just going to add the words into the actual prompt box but you're no longer using that template. And then the X obviously is just to clear the template if you decide not to use it anymore. Within the prompt box, you're going to see prompt triggers, and this could be used in multiple ways. If I select it here, you see I have this style here, painterly concept, art brush strokes. Now this is done based on the model. So we go into our models here, and let's say for realism engine, I want to put some trigger words on it. Now this is good to use for Laura's especially. Now some Laura's have trigger words. When you select that model or Laura, there are various settings that you can change. So let's say for Realism Engine, you can click on Edit. You can change all the information here if you wanted to, the name of it, the description, so on and so forth. There's even default settings. So if there's specific models that you want to have a certain size, a certain CFG, some models have recommended settings. You can set that here in advance. But the other thing you can do is put in a trigger word. So whether it's a model or a LoRa, you can put those trigger words in here. For Realism Engine, I like to use Analog a lot, maybe even Polaroid. I like to use them in combination. Then click on Add. You'll see the tag here. So now when I go here to prompt trigger, you don't see it right now because I have a different model selected. But if I change this to realism engine, 
Click on Add Prompt Trigger, you'll see Analog Polaroid, and you see it's inserted there already. So it's a very cool way to set up your LoRa's or even specific words to a certain model. This one here, linking prompt and style, I'm not too sure if it's functioning properly with this current version of Invoke AI. When I went to test it, it wasn't really working properly. So the ideal here, when SDXL first came out, you would separate the stylistic elements of the prompt and put it here. But I've noticed doing it this way, this prompt would generate ignoring the main prompt. So I'm not sure if an update needs to be done or maybe I'm doing it wrong, but it's not really important at this point. When I get a definite answer, I'll definitely let you guys know. And then this is for dynamic prompts. We won't get into it today, but let's say you wanted to create a dog, cat, and a raccoon in the same prompt. You can do that here. Next, we have our image section. And by the way, these are all collapsible sections. So let's open up image. Pretty straightforward. You have your common aspect ratios. You can flip the dimensions here. You can lock the aspect ratio or optimize for the model. So if it's for SDXL, 1024 by 1024. Some sliders to change the width and height. You have your seed here. You can toggle that on and off if you want to fix seed. They do have a shuffle seed option here. Denoising strength we'll look at later when we do image to image, but this is what you need to do image to image. Scale before processing, leave it on auto for now. We'll talk about this when we look at canvas. Under the generation tab, this is where we're going to select our models. You see that it's separated by SDXL. There's an area for flux and SD 1.5. I just have <laughs> Rev animated there. Now, if you did set some default settings, you can click on this and it's automatically going to set those settings. You see parameter recalled. I don't have this set a particular way, so nothing changes. And then here you could just go to models tab same thing. And then below the model are concepts. That's where you would install your LoRa's. I don't currently have any installed while you have the Flux LoRa here. So if I select the Hyper LoRa there, you see we have a slider for the weight or we can manually enter it here. Compositing, we won't get into that today. It's unimportant at the moment. There's a section here for refiner. If you're using the base SDXL model, you could use the refiner. Most people use fine tune models, so this isn't as useful as it was in the beginning. And then you have some advanced options here. If you wanted to select specific VAEs, you have the VAE precision here, whether it's FP16, FP32. And then if you wanted to do like seamless tiling, toggle these on. But that's pretty much it for your standard settings.